Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Workshop Tutorials, brought to you by ModMyPi, BuyAPi.ca, and PyShop.us. In this series of videos, we'll demonstrate nine projects that could be made using the YouTube Workshop Kit for Raspberry Pi. These projects are a great way to familiarize yourself with the Pi's input and output functions, as well as creating programs in Python that we'll use to control the Pi's hardware. In this fourth tutorial, Push Button, we'll connect a button as our first input for the Raspberry Pi. The circuit diagram calls for a white wire, but we'll use a yellow one because that's handy in the, in the kit. We'll leave two pins between the red wire and the yellow wire to connect to GPIO 10. Connect there on the circuit board. We want to install the switch this way so that the legs span the two halves of the circuit board. Like that. The circuit diagram shows connecting diagonally through the switch. So any connections that go from this row diagonally to this row or from the upper row here diagonally to the lower row will be completed when the button's pushed. So we'll connect diagonally to the upper row here and to our ground rail. Here's a closer look. Now that I've modified my circuit, I've powered up the Raspberry Pi and I'm ready to create the program that matches the circuit. Let's switch first into our code directory and I'll show you a new trick. When you're typing, type cd space gp and then instead of typing the whole rest of gpio underscore python underscore code, simply press the tab key. This will autocomplete the file name that looks like it starts with gp and press enter. We'll use the touch command to create for underscore button dot py and nano to edit it. Again, you can try this trick. Type for and then tab and then enter to open it. It's a little bit faster. Copy and paste your code from your source and let's take a quick walkthrough. For the first time, we're using the import os command, which gives us access to the os library allowing us to read the system date and time, and also to clear the screen using the clear screen command. We're also configuring an input pin for the first time. We're setting pin number 10 as an input, and we're using a pull-up resistor to stabilize the input's value. This is really important because it's digital electronics. We want a one or a zero, a true or a false. If we don't stabilize the input, it'll flicker back and forth uncontrollably between a 0 and a 1, confusing our program. In this case, we're using the up value, so this is going to be a true condition. You'll recognize the while true loop that we used in the Blink Forever tutorial. Everything that follows while true will keep happening until we press Control C to end the program. This is the first time that we've used an if-else conditional statement. It allows us to have one action happen when the button is pressed and something else to happen when it's not pressed. In this case, when our input goes low, which is false, we'll have the program display that the button is pressed and also the time and date that it happened. Otherwise, if the input remains high where it's set with the pull-up resistor, It'll continually display on screen, waiting for you to press a button. So now that we understand what the code is doing and what to expect, let's test it out. 
Press Control X to exit, Y for yes, and enter to confirm. Go ahead and run your program using sudo python for underscore button dot py. As soon as we push the button, we'll see the system time and date stamp. Remember that there's a five second pause built into that section of the if statement. So if we press the button twice rapidly, nothing different will happen. Thank you for watching and please follow us on social media for more Pi projects and resources.